what's up? Uh, Marco here, and uh, today what we're going to be discussing and going through is the, uh, the Vortex by Progen. So uh, that is a name that is not unfamiliar to, to Vapors, especially the old school ones. He's been in the business for a very long time, and this is uh, by far one, one of the uh, the most kick-ass rebuildables that I've uh, that I've handled. So if you take a look at how it looks with the uh, with the top cap on, uh, it is deceptively designed as though it were a tank. I'm not sure if an upgrade is coming out soon, hopefully one would, that would allow us to, to turn it into a tank, but it is in fact a rebuildable drip type atomizer, as you can see. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it negates the need for tools when building, so you don't have to carry your allen keys around, or your screwdrivers, or your sets, or whatever. Uh, basically, the uh, positive and negative terminals are locked down by these little knurlings here, that are very easy to, un to, to screw and unscrew using just your hands. So uh, that in itself is a major uh, feature of the atomizer and I think it's pretty cool because for someone like me who doesn't like carrying stuff around, then uh, this really is uh, in fact a, a huge benefit. Now um, if you look at it, it uses a singular o-ring to lock the, um, the top cap in place and uh, you, you can actually also screw the bottom portion out so you can clean the contacts. Incidentally, this thing also uses copper contacts, so you can imagine the power that runs through this thing. So, there you go. Solid copper. Now, I'm not going to get into details because my good friend Jay was able, able to cover basically everything, so we're just going to be discussing it in very quick detail, then maybe a bit of a vapor production demo, just so you guys see how it works. Now, um, one major highlight of the Vortex is the huge ass chamber that it has. So it makes it very conducive not only for vapor production but also for flavor retention. And uh, we're gonna give a bit of a vapor demo on it. Now one drawback to the atomizer, I'm gonna get right to it, is that it can get a bit selective when it comes to, to locking down on mods. Uh, and it's pretty difficult to take the base out. So I'm not able to flush it all the way down without significant effort. but. Uh, the, the performance of the atomizer itself is very um, compensatory to how the, the locking on the, um, the 510 connector works. So uh, I guess I can do away with that as a, as a minor gripe. Right. So let's uh, take a look at how it, uh, how it vapes. There you go. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, what is the window made of? It's actually a polycarbonate uh, material that was used for the window. And uh, the cool thing about it is I've had this for about three weeks now, and um, it hasn't shown any signs of cracking. Now, I build pretty low on it since I'm using a full mech mod, but um, we haven't had any problems when it comes to the, uh, the polycarb window cracking. If you take a look at it, you will see absolutely no cracks on it. So it is very resistant to the use of methylated juices because I vape um, minty melon milk 24 by 7 almost. So uh, it's pretty resistant to that. And uh, if you take a look at it, the, uh, the, the air hole is still stock. So uh, the stock boring on the air hole is at 1.5 millimeters. So it's not too tight, but at the same time, it's not too loose for you to, to be forced to lung vape it. Now, um, I mentioned that Jay already covered everything, but this is something that I need to discuss again. The, uh, the size of the chamber, you've seen the inside, you've seen the top cap, how big it is. Uh, the size of the, uh, the chamber makes it almost impossible to flood the damn thing. That's pretty cool because um, I use droppers. As you can see, I transferred all of my MMM to uh, one of those drop type models. So uh, we're going to try to flood it out and uh, see how it still vapes after. We're running low on juice, I think I'm going to have to restock soon, but anyway. So uh, that should give it a nice little flood. For any other rebuildables, that would be a flood, and that would mean vaping isn't going to be as as enjoyable because you're not going to get decent burning on the wick. But let's take a look and see how it goes.
See, uh, as I mentioned, it doesn't flood. Well, it will flood if you flood it all the way beyond the air hole right there. But um, it's really not that um, prone to uh, actual flooding. Now, uh, I'm using a Fomec mod, as I mentioned, and it's an 18350 battery that I've been vaping for the past hour. So it's uh, probably about halfway, halfway dead. Another kick-ass thing about this thing is the SRP on it. It's at uh, 2,800 bucks. Now I got it a little bit cheaper because I was on the uh, the pre-list that was on PBF, but uh, the standard retail price for it is at 2,800. So it's available at Vape Central branches. Uh, all of them carry it, I think. So you're gonna have to check your nearest store for availability. But uh, because they sold out pretty quick, <laughs> I gotta tell you. And uh, I really can't blame those people who bought them right away, myself included. You know, it's one of those that I don't regret spending on because uh, it's pretty kick-ass. The only drawback to it is uh, what I mentioned earlier, how selective the, um, the threading on the connector seems to be. Uh, I, I've had a bit of a hard time screwing it onto a, a Captain Barbell. I've also had a bit of difficulty screwing and unscrewing it from a, um, on an Apex Ultramax. So uh, that is the uh, only visible drawback that I see. Other people might complain about the polycarb window, but uh, I've tested it and I think it's a bit of a torture test given how low I build and how much I vape methylated juices. So um, it's pretty durable if, uh, if that's what you're talking about or if that's what your main concern would be. So um, another thing about the, um, the Vortex is that the, uh, the polycarb window can actually be r rotated. I don't know why I can't seem to rotate mine, but uh, I guess it's because it's gunked up a little bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to give it a shot later. It can be rotated so that you can actually bore multiple air holes and it acts like an airflow control because you can just position it in such a way that the smaller air holes or the other air holes are covered by the, uh, the, the linings here. So uh, the polycarb window is a two-in-one thing apart from you being able to see inside, which is pretty neat. Actually, it looks like a bliss by Doc Dave, uh, pretty badass. But um, the, uh, the main thing about it is that it's actually locked in place by a thread. So that means you can actually rotate it. If, if, if you, you clean it well enough and you, you twist it a little bit with your finger, you're going to be able to rotate it and it acts as an airflow control of sorts. Now uh, that in itself is pretty cool because you don't have to worry about boring the only possible point of ventilation for your, um, for your atomizer. If you're into clouds of vapor and you're into lung vaping and all that stuff that necessitates uh, large air holes, you know you actually have more more options when it comes to this. And, and since it's a polycarb window that you're gonna be boring, it's pretty easy to go through as opposed to a stainless steel top cap. So uh, there you go, the Vortex by Progen. If you guys want a more detailed review, check out Mr. J. Espino. He has already covered basically everything in his review. So this is a, you know, more of a just for kicks one. So uh, hats off to Progen for this one. This is really badass. So I'm gonna catch you guys soon, you guys wait hard.